In any case, on to Doug. After having my put exercised, made a short put position, naked put position, I ended up buying EA Arts for 115. My break even after deducting premium is 113.42. Okay, so I own shares of stock now, EA Arts, 113.42. Running fix a broken stock, I bought a 90 call and sold two 100 calls on the position. So that's the stock repair. Bringing your cost down to 104.81. Okay, I'm going to walk through all this. All good. Stock is now over the 100 call. Um, for the two calls I sold, I'm wondering. Should I be rolling the long 90 and the two short calls at 100? I have the position in my portfolio, but it does not show me any analysis. I do I run the what if to see my options? Okay. All right, so point, counterpoint. Let's go ahead and put in the long stock position first. Put it in for a month ago or so, or a few weeks, a few weeks ago. Let's put it in at 12.2. We own EA, EA, at an initial cost basis, we'll just use 100 shares, 113.42. This is before the repair. Okay, now, what Doug is referring to is this fun tool we have on Power Options called the Stock Repair Tool. It builds ratio spreads for you to help you get back to break even faster. Now, sure, as the stock falls, I could say, hey, just as we were talking about before with a diagonal, well, the stock drops below 100. Okay, I could sell the 100 call and get a dollar, but that only lowers my cost basis to 112. If EA recovers and goes above that short call, I might be locked into a loss of $12 because of the 100 strike. I'd have to roll it up, and that might cost me more money. What this allows us to do, and EA might be different now, but the repair technique stocks at 104.55, not bad. And I've got repairs out to Jude. I, I like to do the credit repairs. It also shows debit repairs. But what this is telling me is it's showing me a ratio of buying a 100 call, excuse me, 100 call on EA and selling two at 105 for a net credit of 590, which lowers my break even to 103.76. Okay. How does that work if I only collected 590? Well, let's look at repair details first. This gives you a breakdown of the potential repair on the position. So yes, I'd pay 1220 for that June 100 call, but I'd sell two June 105s at 905 a piece, and I get 1810. There's my 590 net credit. I paid 113.42. So we'd think that the break-even should only be about 108. Now, oh, okay, 107. How's it go to 103.76? Well, because if the stock's trading at 103.76, what happens? Those two short calls expire worthless. These would expire. And the 100 call is worth 376. So I take in, I have a loss of 966 for my original purchase price. The stock's at 103.76. I keep the 590 net credit. My long call is worth 376. I'm back to break even without needing the stock to go back up to 113.42. This is what Doug did on his position. He entered some type of repair, the ratio repair, to help him get back to break even. And now, what, oh, you had to go out to 2021. You did that when the stock was lower. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Now, his repair that he did, we put our stock in, but that's what the, the I'm sorry, that's folks, that's what the stock repair does. And let's look at analyze trade real quick. That'll take us back to the profit and loss chart for this repair. I'll show that too, sorry. There we go. And so what this is showing us now is just as I had put it into that custom spread tool we were using earlier for other examples, now the break even at June, a profit of 248 or 2.3% if the stock's trading at 105, where I'd still have an $8 loss in holding the stock itself. The repair that Doug used is that he bought, when he looked at the tool, because the stock was at a lower price, the only repairs that came up 
were the January 2021s. And he bought a 90 call, looking good, at 1783 and sold two 100s, 1322. All right, so we bought one. 1783 and we sold two at 1322 now these ones are up around 1560 so I've lost two dollars and forty cents on the short call it's a little bit higher than that let's call it uh, 1650 so I've given back 330 in this case on the shorts but my long has gone up about six points almost to about $23 or so. Oh, no, not quite as much. Okay, so five forty, five thirty. dollars right? So I still have more of a gain than I have on one of the losses on the short call. That's what we'd expect. We had a higher delta in that longer call. All right. In any case, this is what we're expecting to see. Roughly about the same 5% profit if the stock's trading above 100 and we get assigned on the two short calls. What did we really do here, by the way? I forgot to break that down. Why is this giving us? Well, what I really have here, and this is important for our next step, Doug, when I'm going to show you what I do in this scenario when I use the ratio repair in the portfolio. What I've done is I've done a bull call debit spread with 190 call and selling one 100 call and converted my losing stock position into a covered call with the 100 strike. All right, nothing's naked here. I have a covered call with a bull call debit spread. So as the stock moves up, I get the advantage of an extra three, four, or five points from the bull call debit spread in addition to the premium we took in and the potential to get assigned on the covered call position for profit. That's the structure. I added a ratio spread to a long call. It creates a bull call debit spread with a covered call position to help me get back to break even faster. Now, why that's important to break out is personally, Doug, when I enter this into the portfolio, that is exactly how I do it. Now, I know this is going to give me a repair back to profit if everything works out. This is a far out one, so it's much more difficult. And um, in relation to what you just said, you know, you don't see any rollout opportunities. And, and you're right. When I go to the analysis, it doesn't show me rollouts for this particular custom spread at this time. And I don't think I would do any adjustments on it right now, even though the stock's at 104.55. I might make one adjustment on this position, but it's difficult because you're so far out in time. But what I'm going to do with this, as I'm tracking my long stock, I'm going to go to position actions and add an option like Doug. And I am going to sell the January 2021 100 calls that are now in the money, but just one. Let's say we did this uh, on the 9th. Just one at your price of, I apologize there, uh, 1322. Uh, 97, I guess. I, I'm not sure what the stock was. Okay, so where the stock was priced at that time. Okay, so I just did one. What does that give me? That gives me a covered call on EA, where my stock's down 827. I'm losing 323 on the short call at this time. It's not looking pretty good. But on the same token, I'm going to enter a bull call debit spread, where we're going to buy one of our 90 calls for January 2021. I'll, I'll change the date just to be consistent, but it's not necessary in this case. And we had it at 1783. And we, I'm sorry, we sold your other call, our other 100 call for 1322. The stock was at 97 ish, whatever the price was. It's irrelevant. Just record keeping, just keeping records there. Okay? And there we go. Now, ignoring Roku and this other Netflix long call we have here that we got slaughtered on, I forget what we were doing there. Um, so now I've got a covered call that's losing. Okay, the liquidation value on that covered call, we're losing 1200 and we're gaining 179 We're at a 38% gain on the bull call debit spread. 
the only adjustment I would consider personally making at this time with the stock at 104. Yes, if I get another, if I liquidated the bull call debit spread now, I'd have a profit, as you saw, of $179. Well, that would knock my cost basis down on this position um, from the 104, uh, I'm sorry, not that, the, yeah, the, the premium that we collected right now, would knock it down another dollar or so. We got the 590 in, would knock this down another dollar. Okay, so we'd be at a cost base of maybe 107 with short the 100 call. So what I may consider doing in that case is just doing the position analysis on that one covered call, Doug. But I'm going to change something here. I'm going to assume that I kept the full 590 from that net credit, right? That was deposited in my account. I didn't really include that yet. It did include part of it here. But I'm going to say if I liquidated that bull call debit, took in $1.79, this puts me at about $111.70, let's say. Okay, set up from that cost basis. I take some of the profit out of that position and the premium I received, I could also take that into account, but it's already taken half of that in account to the covered call position. Okay, so this might actually be a profit for you, but that's 399 days away. It's a covered call that's down still 11%. And it shows me the roles that we could consider making. Okay, so now you see the rollout opportunities by separating the two out and factoring in if you liquidated the bull call debit spread now, you could factor that into the lowered cost. Me personally, I'm not touching this bull call debit spread. Why? Because it's still so far out in time. The max I expected to get back was $5 and I'm only getting about $179 back from it right now. I want to let this go more in the money and maybe more time value come out so at least I can get 50% of what I expected to get back from this position. On that five, oh, and this is a 10 point spread. I'm so sorry. It's a 10 point spread. I thought it was a five. It's a 10 point spread right now, even though it's above 100, but there's 399 days of time premium. So I could close it right now, liquidation value of 640 out of the 10, but that only puts me a profit of 179 on this bull call debit spread. I want to wait a little bit more personally, but I'm treating the other one as a covered call. But it's a hard gauge. You can now see the rollout opportunities, Doug, in the portfolio for that covered call position rather than the custom spread that you have. But it's a tough call because this thing is so far out in time. We're about 4, 455 in the money, so the time value is still, what, 1210. You've only got a dollar ten time value in your favor, and you've got to pay intrinsic to buy it back. Now, is it better maybe to buy it back and roll it higher now, Doug, if your sentiment's changed again and you think EA is going to continue up in price? Possibly. I don't want to pay $20 or $30 if EA keeps going in this scenario. But you see here, now that it's a covered call, I can see that I haven't gained much uh, decay in the time value, only about a dollar but that's been countered by a three, four dollar move in intrinsic value on the option. And there is so much time left on this position, 399 days. And it pulled back a little bit today. And it was 105 earlier, but it pulled back a little bit today. Yes, it's above both strikes in your bull call debit, but you're not yet at 50% profit on just the static bull call. It might be better to wait a little bit longer, or if it continues to go up, the two deltas on those calls are going to increase faster, and you'll get a better liquidation value than that that six dollars or so which is only giving you the 179 profit for the debit spread side although you already took in well my example I took in 590 years was different I apologize for that okay yours was closer to nine wasn't it I sorry I just realized that you uh, paid 1783 and you would have gotten 2644 so you're close to about eight dollars in net credit that you took in on this position. That's fantastic on the the ratio spread there between the ninety and one hundred. Yeah, that's that's pretty pretty good. That's a really good. It's better than the five ninety I saw for the June position. Um, but now is the problem is that these are still so far out of time that you want time value to decay in your favor. Can't tell you what to do with your position, Doug. But what I can tell you is I think a better approach right now might be to separate it in your portfolio. Do the bull call debit spread, buying the 90, selling the 100, 
and see what profit you have on just the bull call debit spread side. Treat the other short call as your covered call against EA and then evaluate what rollout opportunities are there. And it doesn't make sense to roll or adjust this short call now. Yes, it is in the money, but it's 399 days out in time. So does it make sense to roll or adjust it now or leave it alone? Maybe look to see some more time decay in your favor on the EA call before making an adjustment. That being said, again, if you think it is going to turn bullish now, if you think it's turned around, then I might want to consider rolling that short call, just the one, of the covered call partition, the covered call portion here, to give you more upside, though it might be adding cost basis into the overall position. Okay. All right. Okay, Doug says, thanks, that'll give me the rollout opportunities and I can watch them better. Great job. Thank you, Doug. I'm glad you enjoyed that as well. Um, uh, Sam just offers his opinion that he doesn't uh, like long-term positions in his portfolio. I do as married puts. And um, uh, you, you heard me say there that just by way the stock has moved now, um, when we looked at it earlier, I saw some June series. Hey, if I'm at a 14, 15% loss on a stock, and um, I can see a repair that can get me back to break even with a stock, you know, in this case, the June one's already at break even, isn't it? It's 104.55. This is a break even of 103.76. I might take that, even though it's six months out in time, to help that little extra kick of the bull called debit. If I'm holding a stock long term, planning on continuing holding it, and I want to get a good repair in. I don't want to say this. I do agree with Sam on one instance. I saw the June ones and I looked at those. I am hesitant to use the stock repairs that are 10, 12, 15 months out in time, even though they're there. There's some 2022s in here as well. I'm hesitant to do that as a stock repair because, as we know, the market changes on a daily basis, but the market also changes sentiment, you know, two, three months, little drop here, a little gain there. It's such a long time to stay in the position, stay in the repair to hope for that time decay in your favor on these two positions, the covered call aspect and looking at the bull call debit spread to roll it for a better gain once the time value starts to come out of both those options. So I'm always hesitant when I go to the repair during a webinar or for my own stocks, if I see something that's 10, 12 months out in time, I'd much, we would all would be, but I'd much rather only be three months, one month, two months out of time, if possible, if a repair can be made, okay? And, and that's the, the situation. And I, one thing I'll agree with Sam on, and um, I think uh, maybe even uh, uh, Doug got into this a little bit, or you might get into this a little bit, what is an issue with these type of long-term repairs that we're looking at is, is just what um, Doug kind of experienced now, but you'd experience in both directions. Well, now the stock is recovered. It's gone above Doug's short strike prices, and he wants to see a rollout opportunity. And a month from now, if the market turns back at the beginning of the year, now Doug's going to be considering maybe what does he have to do with his bull call spread, or does he have to roll down these strikes to get a better premium because he's taking new losses? Or should he liquidate that initial repair that's still 12 months to go out to the next January? and do another repair based on the new cost basis. Sam's comment on that was, you know, these longer term trades sometimes give me a headache because you can start to outthink yourself. There, there's a difficulty of pulling back and just saying, hey, I entered this spread. I entered this repair. I took a chance on a long term strangle. But do I want to manage it every time, every 10 days, 20 days when the stock changes direction and swings down, then swings back up then swings down? Or am I just got to sit back and leave it alone and not look at it and leave that money in there knowing that I need time decay or I'm fighting time decay, but it's not really going to kick in the four or five months away. And that was sort of Sam's thoughts. Is it, dry, it gives him a headache because you have to get that decision. Do I just do something? Do I not do something? Do I leave it alone because I have the time? And that's one of the reasons why the radioactive trades and the married puts I really like because I have that benefit of saying, hey, I can do a near-term adjustment. I can sell premium or do an income method short-term against my long-term married put or just leave it alone. And even if I let it sit for another two months, I'm still only losing half a percent or one percent of time decay on my far-out option that's protecting my long-term investment in the stock itself. 
Of course, I'd like to close every married put 12 or 15 days in for a 20% profit if the stock takes off 40%, but that's not what the strategy is. <laughs> but that's sort of uh, Sam's comment there and related to that as well. All right. Okay, so going back to the beginning here. There we go. Okay, so the return worked out good, and that's, I, I just, yeah. Separated out in the portfolio is, is one way I track those positions there, those stock repairs, so they have two separate legs, and I can track it as that. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, I don't see any further questions that have come in. I think I got to everything, including most of Sam's comments uh, that he gave us during the presentation. And I uh, just wanted to remind everyone, of course, that today's material are my thoughts on your questions, designed for educational purposes, increasing options investment performance and options investing knowledge. Any stocks or options discussed today should not be taken as direct trading suggestions. I'm not going to go open a calendar spread on Valero on Monday. Um, I'm not going to start tracking EA now, but, um, the Doug's trading. I'm not going to go bullish and bearish on it. And uh, you know, we talked about the three bull put credit spreads we had that matched the criteria from 12-2. They all expired worthless. And I'll see what new positions would come up on Monday following uh, that trading plan for the bull put credit spreads that I use. Um, and we'll discuss that later on on the 27th, I guess, as well. Uh, but just remember that I'm not going to ever trade against anyone in the room. I'm not going to trade with anyone in the room. These are just examples, suggestions, and discussions as well. Options do involve risk and may not be suitable for all investors as well. Uh, so I want to keep that in mind. Uh, today we saw some of the search tools for calendar spreads very briefly. We pointed to the webinar there in the free webinar section that is more in-depth on criteria. We looked at the portfolio tool for tracking and managing and how you can see rollout opportunities on certain positions, credit spreads, debit spreads, even calendars, just a long call or the covered call position. If you want to test out these tools and put them to work for you, remember, just go to powerop.com at any time. Put in your name and email address, and you'll have full access to the site for 14 days. Uh, after that, the subscriptions start off at about $45 per month. We have different levels of service for the type of data that you want. You have to pay extra for the data. It's all on our side. just changes that as well. Other free education, remember, you can go to blog.powerop.com anytime. We showed that webinars page, powerop.com slash webinars.asp. You can also check us out on YouTube as well. Uh, in the next day or two, Keep an eye out. In addition to seeing the archives, I'm going to post the archives from today's presentation, send you an email where they're available. We're also going to launch that final end of year promotion for that married put radioactive trading content I discussed, the blueprint that uh, you know I use with 40 to 50% of my trading portfolio for protective trading. We're going to show you the eight bonuses that we're going to have for the blueprint um, before midnight on 1231. That's the last time that's going to be done there. Well, there's a variety of different bonuses you can get if you pick up the blueprint between now and December 31st. You'll see more about that coming soon. If you think about any other questions related to options, options trading, strategy, or more, send me an email at any time, support at powerop.com, support at radioactivetrading.com. You can also call us during market hours at 302-992-7971. And as I mentioned before, those of you that are trial members or subscribers, you can schedule a coaching session at any time. It's a 35 to 45 minute phone conversation with myself or Ernie, and we'll answer any questions you have. Wrapping up, Mark says, thank you for this weekly seminar. It's always interesting to hear other people's questions. I agree, Mark. I enjoy it every week, and I also enjoy seeing new ways to trade that sometimes I evaluate and delve into. Uh, I appreciate your help and Sam's help and others, uh, specifically with the topics on hand and helping me uh, delve down deeper into some of the concepts when we do enter a discussion. Uh, Sam says, thank you, sir. Happy weekend to everyone. Relax and enjoy family time. Uh, spend time with loved ones and enjoy some nice food as well. Fantastic. Sam, you too. You have a fantastic weekend, a nice relaxing weekend. Two more Friday expirations until we get into 2020, ladies and gentlemen. So we'll take your expiration questions next week on the 20th, and then we'll go into our review on the 27th, our favorite topics for the year, and uh, clean out some of the trash, some of the old archives there, and uh, get to other questions as well on the 27th as we get ready for the new trading year. Have a fantastic night, everyone. We'll see you soon. Enjoy your weekend.